Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Welcome to another stream. We're looking into mining today and a couple other yeah. things, and we'll answer your questions. So, I, yeah, my name is Mark. I'm one of the developers on Foundry, and with me today is the wonderful, talented Patrick. No, stop is, it. <laughs> oh, just gushing compliments, just gushing compliments all around. Yeah, no, we, uh, we, this is our second uh, live stream where we're, we're just going to chat about a feature in the game and then take questions from the, uh, the chat and whatnot and, and try to, try to get everyone up to speed with what we've been working on for the past few years here. And uh, as we lead into early access on May 2nd. Yes. Um, today we're focusing on, on mining, resource acquisition, with the voxel system, digging into the underground, all those things, and maybe a couple other things. It depends on how long it takes to show off those things. So we might also show you a couple other smaller things, but mining and voxels are the main focus today. Yeah, we'll start with sort of uh, some of the things you might be familiar with in Foundry and then go into the, some of the new systems like the underground mining and, uh, and fracking and all that great stuff. So uh, Foundry, Foundry kind of like starts out like a lot of other survival or factory games where you're, you've got to go and gather resources by hand, which quickly becomes annoying. And uh, as it becomes annoying, you got to automate everything and you have to keep upgrading it. And, and, uh, go through the tech tree basically so today that's what we're gonna do patrick is just mining some ore what, what ore do you got there patrick that is xenoferrite this is basically alien iron okay alien iron yeah but it's got a way cooler name so that, that's good <laughs> yeah so on top of those yeah, patches we have those chunks you can mine and sure. they disappear right away they are to get you started a bit quicker you see everyone you mine has a lot of ore in it like the last one had 12 this one had even 18 so this is the starting uh mechanic so that you don't have to stand here and like mine this block for 20 minutes because these only give you two ore so that's not so great we have already a couple things prepared, but the regular way to start the game would be to put this into your integrated smelter from your drop pod to get your first plates. And here you can smelt the other or the Technum, but we don't want you to watch all that long. So we're going to speed things a bit up and we have a few well, well, let's go get some of the other ore. Where did our other ore go? Patrick, maybe you should show them the scanner. Yeah, sure. Let's start with the what? scanner. So we were kind of cheating here uh, because we can't go over all the mechanics in uh, such a short period of time. Uh, and so you see Patrick's got a lot of stuff in his inventory already. But we, you can use the scanner to find various types of ore and then upgrade it later to find even more uh, valuable and complicated ore. Yes. So you asked where the other ore is. The other ore is right here. Oh, and this is like blue clue Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> so much different. And some of you might have already spotted there's more. The scanner also reveals ore that is buried deeper into the ground. So that's a key element the foundry you need to dig down it's only the starting ores that are available at the surface and we're going to show that as well maybe uh show the the tech tree briefly and, and you can see that how we have like everything's unlocked in this save but you can see that a lot of the different ores and scanner modules and whatnot are, are locked behind uh a relatively complicated uh, research tree. Yes, th this is correct. Um, we also have something we call uh, world layers. So uh, you need to, when you dig down, you'll eventually hit a type of rock you cannot mine because it's too hard. Uh, so you 
go to research and advance your mining force and that allows you to get and venture into those deeper layers where they're like more more ore, richer veins, all all the good stuff. Right. Now we've been mining uh, ores, but there are other resources in Foundry, right? Like you, when you often need to power something, you're gonna have to grab biomass. Yes. And uh, you can collect that from all the different vegetation around the world as a sort of cheap intro power source. Yes. Uh, to mine trees and plants and get biomass. Again, I already have some of it prepared in the inventory, but regularly you'd have to mine that. Yeah. And that's I, kind of been the theme of like a factory game. You always end up having these sort of not not boring, but like tedious, tedious tasks you have to do. And then the joy is automating so you never have to do it again. Absolutely, that's that's the plan. It starts off, I wouldn't say tedious, but I mean, it would get tedious if you have to do it for more than 15 minutes. So yeah, that's the plan. You have to do a bit at first by hand and then we provide you with the options to automate it and streamline the experience. So here you can see the biomass burner. I place this to generate some power drag in our biomass here and we're good so we have those floors in foundry and the floors convey power we do have a second way of conveying power but i don't want to get into that right now generally speaking most machines are placed on the floor and if the floor is powered through a generator for example you will automatically have powered machines like this one, Ooh. a drone miner. Uh, the questions about uh, locomotion in the game. Right now, the char only character upgrade is the jetpack, but you can hitch a ride in various long distance transport ships. You can build uh, roadways with concrete that walk faster, and you can build basically escalators to, to create some infrastructure to move around the base quickly. Yes. So there's there's a variety of ways to get around New Foundry, and uh, we're, we're hoping to add more over time as well. Um, question is like, hey, what the heck? How is this different than Satisfactory? Well, I think today we're going to be talking a bit about one of the main features that, that's quite unique for Satisfactory, which is that we're in this uh, completely diggable, buildable, voxel world, and all our ores aren't at the surface. We're digging down deep into the, the depths of the planet, trying to find that next ore vein. In a lot of ways, like this game's been in development long before, before Satisfactory came out. It was sort of uh, inspired more from Factorio and modded Minecraft. So it's, you're, you're going to see a lot of those ideas appearing here. Um, very, very, very different game from Satisfactory. Uh, obviously, sharing the first-person perspective, but uh, a very different feel. You know, there's no combat. It's very chill. Very focused on the building. The sort of like OCD-friendly grid align snap. Everything snaps together. Uh, is sort of the focus. Uh, so we've done a lot of effort to make sure the game scales up and you can build these mega factories and whatnot. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a different it's a different flavor of factory game, I'd say. Yeah, uh, or nodes are they infinite. So th this surface node of, uh, of Xenoferrite is not infinite. These little drone buddies are going to mine it out. Absolutely. Uh, and that 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 can be pretty frustrating when you're building a base and your your assembly lines all just dry up. And. Uh, that's why we have mechanics as you progress through the game that do become infinite. So you can scale and not have to uh, be searching for, for ore deposits all the time. These last a long time. Like for, for a lot of players, they'll they're not going to play to have this uh, mined out. But as um, as you get you scale up and build mega factories, the, these will deplete, and you're going to need to do something called fracking in order to and ore veins in order to get something um, <laughs> minecraft meets universal paper clips actually <laughs> yeah that's that is sort of the end game uh pitch we have we're, we're not talking about it i don't know if we're gonna talk about it too much in this stream but uh a lot of what we're way the way we plan to grow foundry 
from early access to 1.0 is working on an end game loop that that really feels kind of like the paperclip game. <laughs> that is that is actually uh, that and Cookie Clicker were, were two things that, that were referenced in the design of that. <laughs> Yes. So you nailed it without even seeing any of the elements. You nailed. Uh, you nailed one of the, some division there. Uh, any mechanics related to pollution? Not currently. We have sort of no disaster states right now. Something that we're thinking about for an update, where we just put in a whole bunch of either natural disasters or pressure mechanics that are like an option, so they can play the game differently. Uh, but right now. Um, Right now, it, the game is mostly positive, it's kind of chill game that gets you into factory building. Um, and to give like you know, Patrick, Patrick, you're you're obviously a hardcore factory player, so you you uh, you love factory games for a bit of a different reason than I do. In, indeed, yeah, I was about to to jump in here because uh, yes. The pressure mechanic, uh, or also most often referred to as like enemies, is something that is heavily requested by the community, and we are looking into it. Um, we're looking into a pressure mechanic, though, and not necessarily enemies. Um, like to to give you a bit of feel, uh, well, well, like my thoughts are here is. I don't really think most people want specifically enemies, but what people are looking for is some sort of thing you can mess up, something that applies a bit of pressure, something that gives you this goal of like, well, if I'm not building this quickly enough, well, something bad might happen. That could be enemies, that could be like uh, some weather phenomenon that like endangers the factory, a storm, whatever. Um, we are experimenting with, with lots of different opportunities to figure out what fits the game. In, in my personal opinion, I'm 100% on board that the game should eventually have some sort of pressure. Um, my feeling tells me that it's most likely not going to be enemies, because enemies in the 3D voxel world, they they are now working perfectly because you have to defend in multiple directions and when I say multiple directions I don't mean like all, all cardinal, uh, cardinal directions like north, west, east, south. No, you also have to define uh, into the, from the air, from like an underground tunnel and that could be a bit frustrating if you basically need to build a, a sphere around your base out of turrets or something like that so my, my feeling is we'll have something different but well I mean like if you look at if you look at satisfactory like they have enemies that they're pretty fun but they're for the most part they're um, what you call like um, like content gates like they're they're there and you approach them they're not attacking your face um, at least in the version of satisfactory I've yes played. Please, please chat correct me if I, they've, they've updated it because I know I know they've done a ton of updates but uh, yeah I mean yeah the, the pressure mechanics could be an, an interesting option that we like layer on but we just wanted to get a, a strong foundation for where we're going to build the game out from and uh, I think that's what this version represents it's like and okay and so my background is that like I was originally at like clay doing like survival games and stuff like that and uh Foundry was sort of the first 3D factory game where it clicked that like building is fun, that like scaling up is fun. And so I think for me, what what Foundry's done is is shown me how factory games can be fun uh, and how building like a crazy number of smelters and miners like Patrick's doing is actually an interesting an interesting gameplay loop. Uh, and so like for me, success would be if we like it's a whole new audience to play uh, factory games because after I after I fell in love with Foundry then all of a sudden all these factory games started being really interesting to me and uh, it was like a whole new genre opened up so that's my hope and I you know in the meantime I'm just going to build a dirt and hut and that's just going to be who I am <laughs> well you can place some light because the night is approaching uh oh 
approaches quickly, so better get started on that. Um, maybe to add on the, the pressure mechanic thing, because um, I already see that question coming up. If we add something, it will always be optional. You will be able to turn it off if you want relaxed building gameplay. That's also something we care about, so no worries about that. Another question yeah, like, uh, was which Minecraft mods uh, <laughs> inspired this. So th there wasn't a, a certain one that inspired this, but I think over the last 10 years, I mostly played them all, the, all the Minecraft tech mods and created those abomination like mod packs that have 300 mods and yeah, it runs roughly as as good as you can imagine, but it <laughs> still had a lot of fun with that, so many different inspirations. Factorio itself, obviously, the main inspiration. Yeah, like I think the, the voxel world, uh, you know, and, and the Minecraft mods figure this out to a certain degree, which is like the voxel world is actually just a great way to play factory games uh, because it just, it's easy to understand. Like all, every factory game has a different twist, right? And uh, here, I think when you play, you just feel like the world is not in your way. You, you don't feel overwhelmed. It's simple to think about how many blocks away everything is, right? Yeah. And uh, for me, at least, that's a huge part of why it, uh, it works works so well. Yeah, and we also provide various uh, visual assistances. Like, as soon as you select the building, we show the grid even better so that it's easier to understand where you are, how the differences are. When you drag something, we show you how long it is. We show those drag planes, all, all sorts of helpers to make this as comfortable as possible. Um, first person building is always a bit more tedious than like top down fly camera style building. So we try to make everything as easy and as understandable and as click, uh, how would you say, to, to make sure it requires the least amount of clicks possible to allow you to build quickly and without frustration. Nothing's worse than the desire to build hundreds of machines and then it takes an hour. So trying to make everything as comfortable as possible in regards to first person building. I, I see some questions about uh, why this is so, this game looks so easy. No, Patrick is cheating, to be clear, guys. Yeah, Patrick yeah. is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he is. Uh, we 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 wanted to show some of the later mining stuff, and we wouldn't be able to fit it into an hour stream. So we have debug spawned everything uh, in our inventory. So yes, no, you, you will not. This is not what your first mining setup is likely to look like. This is this is what a, a pro player who's cheating uh, <laughs> looks like. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just want to I want to clear that up there. That that the game is. I I don't think the game is this easy. You know, some of the, the better players might think the game might say the game is, is easy, but it's certainly not me. Yeah, we, we try to find the right balance uh, to between getting started in a slower pace, but also not like dragging the experience out. So I'd say to to build this in a regular start, it wouldn't take super long, but this probably would have taken you well. 25 minutes maybe, uh, but it scales quickly from here, you know, it's like, this is well, just the, it, the tutorial process, the initial tasks, like, once you're late in the game, you can build those things exactly as quickly as I just showed you when you have all the items prepared in your inventory. But I think that's, I think that's the important bit, is like the whole loop is figuring out how you prepare so that it's easy, right? Like. In a factory game, it's all like, how am I going to lay out all these machines? How am I going to build these assembly lines so that my life is as easy as this cheater Patrick? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so uh, your first factory is not going to look like this. You're going to lay it out wrong, and it's going to suck. I hate to be the one to tell you, but like 90% of players are going to suck 
on their first factory and they're going to fix it and that's like a lot of the fun of this game is, is figuring out and the satisfaction of like actually making it work better so um, i don't know that that to me is is the hook is when you get that satisfaction of like laying out a nice uh assembly line and, and feeling uh <laughs> feeling feeling the progress as you do it better so um, and, and you know a lot of this stuff is locked and you have to research it and all this stuff to uh to actually build some of these things yeah showing off the research tree once more uh, there's a bunch of stuff in there there will be more chicken barber uh, chicken barber barber asks when is the release date is it in sight may 2nd we have a release date uh my god we finally have one uh, so yeah i know it's been on your wish list forever but it, it's happening we are going to actually release foundry uh we're really happy with where the game is uh and i think it's during early access we're going to really uh build it out wonderfully with the community so we're very excited uh, to actually get to share it yeah um may 2nd is actually in four weeks from today so oh my god Oh my God! Thanks for the reminder. We gotta, we gotta go fix all those bugs. Um, General Mudkip was saying the best part of a factory game is unlocking a new item and realizing you have to quit top hold the production. Uh, yeah, that's actually that. It, it's funny, like that sounds like a joke, but that's actually one of the best parts of the factory game <laughs> is that moment where you scale up. Like that, that to me is the fun. Like um, you know, we talk a lot about you know what makes a factory game fun internally uh, especially coming from survival games which is what i usually work on and it was just very interesting to, to get into that, that yes uh, um yeah max efficiency is another thing uh lord's channel is just talking about like people get have to get the ratios right the recipes and the belts and stuff and like i think that's a very satisfying loop for some people i i personally don't care about perfection but um, <laughs> i know a lot of our audience does okay mark what do you think let's look at the underground ore okay i'm coming patrick okay so i'm using the scanner here and located an ore it's not visible from the surface so what we're going to do is we'll dig a bit and see where where it is Oh, you're Imagine. using the, the mining laser already, the faster one, huh? Sure enough. Yeah, it's a speed thing, thing, so. Do it here. And so you found this using the ore scanner that you've upgraded, eh? After. Yes. What's this, what's this mineral we got here? This one's called Ignium, and this one can be used to uh, generate power. So, you've seen we have those biomass burners on the, um, the foundation on the other side next to the ore patch and we had to manually insert the, the biomass into them and that is exactly what we've been talking about but being tedious after some time so we're going to automate this right. here because as you add more buildings, the power consumption goes up and it burns the biomass faster. It becomes a total pain in the butt. So you do need to automate as you, uh, as you go further. You guys love the, oh, that audio. It's either the worst uh, response or the best. Uh, so, so we'll maybe not use the drill unless, uh, or not use the laser gun. To get this, uh, pull people's <laughs> ears out. We're going to go back to drill. Uh, will you have elevators and conveyor lifts in the game? Yes, uh, there are player and item elevators uh, in the game. Uh, this is this ore deposit is just lightly buried. The next one is deeper, and we're going to have to use those. Yes. Uh, how does this change from the Steam Fest demo? So we have uh, quite a few new things in it from the Next Fest demo. Uh, I think we go up to Science Pack Four, so uh, two two additional Science Packs. We have our end game loop in it, which we're not talking about too much in this stream. And uh, we have a, a whole new sort of, uh, I don't know if we're gonna say narrative or story, but we have we have some new elements and surprises earlier in the game that, that I think uh, 
people people who like the next best demo are going to be pleasantly surprised by. But yeah, basically a lot more stuff to build in this version, plus uh, a lot more. And there are a lot of surprises and fun stuff for, for different folks. Yeah, we have new stuff, more polished stuff, more content, new features, all, all of the good things. Next has had creative uh, building, right? Sorry, me? Sorry? Our next has built had the creative stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we, um, we've got some other creative items coming as well that weren't in next fest that are pretty exciting. Yes, uh, decoration has been expanded by a lot. Um, while we're watching our drones collect some ignium, I can show some of the decor pieces here. Let's spawn a couple of them. Too dark, I need to make it brighter for you, Patrick. Sure. So, let's... There we go. Not so dark, not happy. Let's create this here, and how about we use some some windows. Oh wow, not gonna definitely. Now I'm feeling like our factory is real. <laughs> I don't hate it for you, don't worry, Patrick. I'll make it pretty. <laughs> sure. Go, go ahead. So, yeah, here you can see we have all sorts of options like the curative blocks. Um, those still take a while to, to fade in. We're working on that. Um, Yeah, you can pretty. colorize them as, as Mark is applying this beautiful chessboard pattern. You're welcome. <laughs> I need to have more green. Sorry, the, the stream will have to wait. I have to do this. Sure, sure. I'll this, I'll take this care is, of, this is important. <laughs> of the power important. management meanwhile. So what you can see here is we have placed the uh, next generator this one is a bit larger and the main benefit is you can automate it with the loader so we don't have to stick stuff by hand into it anymore so that's a huge improvement and that's why I'm going to drag a belt over there so that we can do the same thing on the other foundation Eventually help we this. have... Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mark. I'm uh, trying to help you. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to clear the path. I swear I'm a helper. I'm a helper. There you go, Patrick. You're set. See? That's teamwork. That's why why we do it. Is there any renewable energy sources? Yeah, we have solar. We don't have wind or geothermal, but we have talked about it. Uh -oh. We used to have solar as the one of the first power sources you got, but um, we found that it, the problem with balancing solar was that you would collect almost infinite energy and then you didn't really have to automate um, so we, we had a, we had trouble uh, trouble balancing solar too early in the game so, so we moved it a bit later yeah we we changed it so that now a solar panel is more a well late mid game element um, and it's still free power so we made it pretty expensive uh, so because that way it also feels like it feels like it has more more weight to it like you you did put in the effort and the reward is free power so that that works better now it's still something we we need to tune a bit um there will be more power sources um this is not for uh the the launch version but we're obviously looking into some sort of complex power plant, if that's going to be nuclear or a fusion power plant to be more sci-fi-ish, we will have to see, but there will be something that's more complex as well, so. Yeah, and, and wind is something that has a similar a similar profile to, to solar. It's like if, if we, you know, if we do, a, say, a weather system update, we might add it, but 
we still have to figure out how that makes sense in the context of like, oh, sometimes the wind blows and sometimes it doesn't. Is grid level storage that interesting? And people are asking in, in the chat if, if we do have grid storage. And yeah, we have batteries and all these different ways to, to cache your power for later. Um, so, so I mean, it, it, it's something that we're thinking of. I think we just need, in order to add the next power source, scale is obviously one that we're going to want. So it makes sense for us to do like nuclear or something like that. But it'd be interesting uh, to come up with unique reasons to add more renewable energy sources or like clean sources. Um, question about dedicated servers. We're working on it right now. Uh, we have it up and running, so it will come out at some point. We haven't made the final call if it's on day one or not. Uh, so, but yeah, dedicated server is something that, that uh, we currently have working and uh, we're hoping to ship. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can transfer the power two different ways between platforms as you can go and build this factory floor between the two different bases to, to, to merge the power grids. Or you can uh, do something called high voltage, run a bunch of power cables and then uh, transfer, bridge the gap that way. Is that accurate, Patrick? Absolutely. Um, this takes a bit to, to set up, so we're probably not doing it in, in this stream, maybe in the end if there's still time left. Um, but yes, the more advanced power generators do have, uh, they don't put the power into the foundation as those starter generators do. The uh, more advanced ones actually put it into a high voltage grid. So those, those are made out of power poles and cables that connect them. And the way it works when you want to get it into your foundation is you you place a transformer. I can show you this. Like here, this is how it would look like. Oh no, I misplaced it. <laughs> oh no. Uh, because sure. the power screen, people might be interested in that. Yeah. So and if you and here is like power poles. And basically the way it works is your generator is connected to those power poles the same way the transformer is and the generator puts in the power into the grid and the transformer is able to convey the power into its attached foundation. I can show you here, we have some nice overview that shows you everything you see here. Currently the high voltage grid has no power. Um, See, no power source is connected, no batteries connected. Batteries are also only for high power, high voltage power. Here you can see your transformers. They do have a throughput, so that means a, a limitation. You need to place multiple, depending on how big or how many machines and then connected floor is. And here you see the low voltage grid. That is basically the foundation and all the buildings that are connected. Here you see those three or, and two burner generators are considered local power sources. And here are your consumers below. You know, one suggestion was having the conveyor belt uh, transmit power. I mean, I don't hate that suggestion. I think it'd be an upgrade later in the game, but uh, it, it currently doesn't do that. Yeah. Currently, you do have to do either the foundation blocks or the high voltage, like Patrick was saying, to, to transmit power. Okay, Mark, let's move on to the to the yeah. next one. So yeah, we're, we're we not finally off. there just... at the at the, okay. the deepest, but I think it's still worth showing how it would look like if you need to go to that one because that one is still like the other, buried into the ground, but this one's way deeper inside. Well, maybe I shouldn't say way deeper, but it's like, you know, 10, 15 blocks deep or something. And yes, you could you could dig down and, and locate it. But even though our drill is... Thanks for jumping ahead, Mark. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sure, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were, I see you were gone and I wanted to blow you up. Uh, as always, as always. Chat, that, that's always what he does. Every time there is no stream, I'm not getting blown up by Mark, so. I usually I usually just go and destroy his base. That, that satisfies me and then I don't have to blow you up personally. But... <laughs> so yes, we have explosives. 
you place them and then there you go and that's the way to yeah uncover. we don't have pvp in the game but so you have to get creative <laughs> yeah and, uh, you know we don't have i it still would yet love it. in the game mark i like the idea that we have a pvp update um, i think that that would make the game even better for for uh, people like me <laughs> I, there I'm are sure you know we're not I, <laughs> Uh, is there smart power management, like only burn Ignium if the battery is empty? I think the battery takes priority over uh, burning. Like, it, it's automatic that I think you drop from battery first, right? Yes, there is a priority system. Uh, so, it takes first solar power, then from batteries, and then from the, the regular power sources. Okay. Yeah, so like we have what we think there isn't a way to override it though right now. Yes, no. Currently, you you cannot uh, configure it on on your own. You made it the little cave if you want one. Perfect. You know, we all contribute in our own way. <laughs> um, and and I, I imagine some of you will have friends that are like me. Let's be real. Some of you will have friends that are good at, at playing multiplayer games. But... Not every night. I will try to get you power. That's how I'm going to contribute here. That is very useful. So we can put some lights in here. Yeah. We should put in. I had. I think I made some other lights that I never put in the actual game. That's indeed correct. I forgot about this. I actually have this one now. I thought they were in the game. Oops. Uh, let's see what we got here. The tools we use now have upper tiers like belt MK2 is faster than MK1. Yeah, I think we have three tiers of belts right now, but not four. Yes, three currently. Uh, uh, how many tiers of assembler? Also three. three as well. Yeah. yeah. Some stuff is for let me let me actually check what we got here. I'm looking I'm looking through the uh the, the tech tree now. There's obviously a lot of really cool stuff here people haven't seen yet. Um So uh, somebody was asking about character equipment earlier. So like say the laser that we were using to mine earlier isn't default, you have to unlock that. Uh, jetpack is something where you have to have, you have to research jetpack and then research and make jetpack fuel, and then you upgrade your efficiency to make it faster. So um, most character upgrades uh, center around mining or uh, locomotion right now. Uh, like, but I do think we have like inventory upgrades, things like that as well. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, inventory spaces would be one of them. There's multiple things. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's uh, it's something where, like, basically, you're in this game. You're 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 grinding through a research tree uh, the whole time. So you're always getting things that make your life easier right around when it would get annoying otherwise. Yeah. And yeah in, in, in this stream, we're constantly flying around with the chat pack, but the chat pack is only unlocked like halfway through the game. So. Here I showed you uh, something we call walkways, and it's a modular system that lets you place all sorts of walkway shapes to create walkways, basically. <laughs> um, so you attach the... You can combine those as you like, and it'll automatically adjust so that it'll work, so the railing here automatically disappears, and you can make all sorts of cool things i guess in in factories it's a key part you have those things where you walk on top look down on your machinery good working so um that was a feature that was really important to me to get that in and also to make it work out of the box because many games have those systems where you then manually need to select the, the pieces and like where you want the railing and where not and like it's just so tedious this is one of those examples i meant previously with we try to make this 
cost you as le the least amount of clicks possible, so this would be a great example of that. We have 45 degree conveyors, 30 degrees is a torment. <laughs> For a game about OC you know, OCD friendly building. Uh, I, I know we've added uh, a few more uh, angles for different, uh, different things, but I, is that really what this is? is the yeah, I see. Their they're, complaint is the conveyor has a different angle than the... Uh, than the <laughs> yes, well, the, the stair is, is 45 degrees, uh, and... I think it would fall down if you had uh, such a... Compare. We'd have to have some new technology that little buckets or something. So we'll uh, we'll we'll look into it. But I, I think this I think this sort of flat conveyor makes sense. That that's yeah. The so the, the the reality is when when we started the game, one of the first things was to to figure out what uh, angle the the slope of the conveyor belts should be. And I can tell you. It looked stupid when it was as steep as those stairs. So we basically made it that they advanced by two blocks forward to uh, go up by one. So yeah. And of course you can walk your belt if you're too lazy to build uh, the railings and the walkways. So yeah. And yeah, I think this shows you how an underground setup would look like with something that's not very deep. Um, this is deeper than the other one where we just had to remove the, the top two blocks, but this one is a little bit deeper. But compared to the overall map height, this is still not that much of a big deal. So I guess it's time to look into the of course, Mark. Sure. Did, just, did destroy want, it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I don't want anyone to find it. We <laughs> gotta keep it secret. Keep it safe, Patrick. Okay, let's uh, let's let's move on to the next thing. Well, that that, that was that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the effort I put into. Uh... Okay. Sorry, sure. Let's, no. let's 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 uh, let's let's do the next one. This one this one was dead to us anyways. Is there an option for stairs at the same angle as the conveyor belts? Currently not, but we might add it at some point. Um, we have a huge Oops. range of uh, decorative elements, so that might come at some point. Yeah. Wait one second. I think I have a solution for everything. I think I have a. I think I. I think this might be it. Might make everybody happy. Let's see if that's true. Let's see what angle we have on this. Yeah, this is 90. Oh no, this is also 90 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> I was excited. I was like, I can't remember what, what the angle on this was, but. But it yeah, is. you can jump on here. And it moves you. See, I'm I'm not moving. It just happens automatically. No. There you go. <laughs> no, we we um. Yeah, that actually like it seems like a funny comment, but it's probably something we'll think about a bit more. Is like because everything's supposed to feel like it snaps together neatly, having different angles. I can see I can see why that annoyed you. Let's let's uh let's do the next stage. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go to Orbane. I yes. think folks haven't seen Orbane before. No, let's do that. So this one's a little trickier because we have those Player large belt. scale uh ore veins and you need to find them. They're not close to the start. So we again need to use our scanner. But our scanner range is quite limited. You see this on the map, like this blue border is basically the area that is scanned. You can toggle this, like show unscanned areas. This this helps you to keep track of which parts of the maps you, you have scanned and which you haven't. And what we need to do is fly around and look for for an ore vein. Um, this this might take a bit. We'll see. Just yeah, going to fly. Here. And yeah, Instead this is the desert. desert kind of. Yeah. No, I, we actually, so there's a whole bunch of biomes in the game. And there are some things that are unique to each biome, but uh, a lot of things like the orbanes are more, I would think of them more as being spaced out uh, as a distance from your origin. 
Yes, um, and also what's worth uh, pointing out is we eventually have a building for you, a long range uh, scanner, so you're not necessarily forced to do what we are doing uh, here at the moment because those deep and large ore veins, they, they are sparse, so it's like this might take us two, three more minutes to, to finally find one. Um, maybe I'll, maybe we'll divide and conquer them. I will, uh, I'll sure. run around looking for one yeah. in a slightly different direction. They, they look different on the map, so they shouldn't be, you should be able to spot them quickly. Have we done all you, all, all you might yet? We have not. Um, that is the, our liquid. Um, we'd have to, put pump checks on top of that. Like our oil? Yes, it's, you know, fancy word for oil. <laughs> I really yeah, hope we find we, we one. Have like a, <laughs> <laughs> we like based the entire stream off of showing you uh, ore veins, and I haven't found one yet. I'm finding lots of all you all you might. Yeah. We, there is a long range scanner. Uh, do we have that in this build to try? Setting that up uh, will take a while. Um, so I think we'll have to, to just fly a bit more here. Um, okay, I'm, I'll just keep flying. I'll just, that'll be my life. Nice yeah. <laughs> work. I found Technum, Technum, all you might. Now, now that I think of it, we we should have prepared. Uh, oh, I, I, I found one. I found one. Okay, I'm coming to you. You're only uh, the entire map away from me. Do you? Oh my God, you're where, so where far you? away. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm like on the. I went the opposite direction. <laughs> I can see if if there's one closer. I'll fly towards your direction. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm coming. I'm only like two kilometers away from you. That's fine. That's that's child's play. <laughs> Found some mineral rock. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm almost at you. Perfect. Oh, you ran, you ran away? Oh no! Go, go start. Yeah. I'll, I'll catch up with you. You don't. You don't need sure. to uh, take these fine folks on a on an orbit sure. thing. Because once I get there, I'm going to blow it up anyways. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope that makes is sense. the world infinite or is there a limit? Uh, the world is infinite. Um, if you try it in the build, you're going to experience some graphical issues if you go out really far. We're going to fix that soon. But like this is really far it's like way beyond you'd ever need to go so it, i'm talking about flying half an hour in one direction or something there's some some interesting yeah. technical difficulties to address this but we totally know how to fix this um and yeah it's, it's you basically as you get so far from the origin you run into like floating point issues so you have to like resolve there it's a really interesting problem in game dev. Like, in a lot of space games, have to solve this where you can go on forever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, effectively infinite. Uh, practically, if you go 30 minutes, 40 minutes walking in a direction, uh, things will start looking weird and wonky. Uh, it actually generates the terrain as you go. So like, um, it's not like we're not not actually. It's all procedurally generated. So we don't have like petabytes of data on your system. <laughs> I'm, it's just the parts you explore that are actually generated, so so it's not too bad. Uh, will we have mod support? There's, you know, we we have light mod support right now, and, and what's interesting is the people uh, in our community have already created some really amazing mods. So uh, we expect to see see more mods come out. We do not have uh, Steam Workshop in time for launch, but. So I'm sure there'll be a community. Right now, people have been sharing them on Discord, but I'm sure there'll be a community site for mods. Okay. Uh, how big can I build before I see performance decreases? Well, so one of the things we did is we had this big play test, and then we challenged some of like the best creators in our community to make giant bases for our release date trailer. 
which which we should post in the chat here. It's a really awesome trailer of just like player bases. And uh, in those bases, you know, we initially got them back and the performance was just terrible. Like people built so big, we were getting 10 FPS. We went and we iterated and we, we worked on performance until these mega bases got 70 FPS. So, so you'd be able to build giant in, in this game. That's the intent. And we're, we're really committed to performance. Yep. Okay, um, let's I'll start explaining what I'm doing here. Um, so we've scanned the, the ore vein. This is this huge chunk of blocks. Like the whole thing here, that's all the ore vein. And the way this works, those are huge structures and they go down till the end of the, the map in terms of the bottom now uh, maybe we should add that for the question if the map is endless it's endless in in the cardinal directions it's not endless going down or up so to to clarify that um, it's mostly related to to gameplay we have certain hates or certain type of content planned and yeah so this yeah, is really you'll probably huge. dig deeper in later updates, right? Like this is where we have all sorts of cool stuff that'll be yeah. deeper. Yeah. Exactly. And this shows the scanner shows here the what we call them attachment points or mining points. So you cannot mine the whole thing. You can only mine on certain spots. And to get them you can use the scanner and it actually shows you the, the coordinates and the middle coordinate is the the block height so for example 108 or 61 so you could dig down but even with explosive it takes quite a while to to get that far down so we have an elevator here and elevators have a nice feature and that is that they can automatically dig for you so i'm configuring this here set the height to the height of the what the ore scanner said oh, just confirm and it starts construction look at this Whoa. it gets rid of everything can digs down so this will take a bit it's not going to take super long but like might take a minute or something to to get to the height we we desire so we'll create some some decorations in the meantime <laughs> Which is an important part because right now it, it doesn't seem very safe. Yeah. Now, now this is really nice. Now, the, now this is so much better. Yeah. So you don't want to fall off. Uh, so people are asking about what we actually produce. Uh, right now, you know, the late game is producing robots. Uh, you know, and you'll find out why you're producing robots later. But uh, we do have, you know, they're asking about doggos and cats. We might have something in store. Uh, for early access that uh, might might scratch your itch. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we're, we're trying to keep it on lock and key that we have some surprise. We want to have some surprises for folks. Okay, Mark, the elevator has finished building. Come, come join me. Okay, I'm in. Yes. Okay. Thanks for obstructing the panel. Yeah, out of the way. Oh, yeah. Okay, definitely in the way. <laughs> okay, I, mining floor. Multiplayer is not easy, man. <laughs> I'm always in the way. I'm always blowing stuff up. I don't know. I, I don't know why people don't invite me to their multiplayer games. Uh, how does hosting work? So this is uh, hosted on the internet uh, uh, through Steam Relay. So Patrick, Patrick's game is the host. So there is no server here. It's just him hosting it. We do have dedicated servers in the work works. We haven't committed to releasing them at early access yet. We're, we're hoping to have them out with the launch of the game, but there's a couple of difficulties we're dealing with. Uh, but uh, then those ones you can host just like any other dedicated server with Steam command and all that. 
so it would be appropriate for web hosts. So, one of my favorite features of the elevator is it's blast resistant. That's an so unfortunate feature. We can just <laughs> go ahead here and move quickly. So, here you see, like, where the power cables, the elevator does, by the way, convey power, so that makes things a lot easier to get power down here. So now we are making our way to the vein, found it. Now we need still an attachment point. So over there. Okay, let's, let's keep going. Direction. I'll find some light for you, I'll, I'll, I'll contribute. Sure. Of course, you contribute sometimes. <laughs> I don't like exploding stuff. Um, so, how long will we be in early access? I don't think we actually have a specific uh, time frame. For us, it's like, when is the... We have a lot of major development still planned in the game, and that's that's in part why we're calling it early access, because we, we want people to know it's going to evolve over time. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think the game stops being developed when we need early access. So it's, it's more like, when is the flavor and, like, any major systems done going in? Like, there'll probably still be updates and stuff, but we, we want to, like, settle on uh, some of these, these systems that might change how you perceive Foundry before we, we go into release. So we don't have a we don't have a, a time frame for leaving early access at this when it's done. Yeah, that is an accurate description. We we don't know yet. We'll see uh, how many things we add during early access. We have plenty of ideas and we're also looking forward to your feedback. Uh, so you might have a very good chance of influencing development. So we... Yeah, and I think that's another thing. It's like we can't know when the game's done until, uh, or like when early access is done until we have uh, feedback from more players, right? Like we've had, we have had people play the game like you, with Foundry, you're going to get a, a, a fairly stable game at launch because we have been iterating with folks for so long. But you're not, uh, you know, you're not going to get the final version of the game yet. We're not there yet. We, we got, we have a lot still to do, and uh, we need to have people, a lot of people, playing it to figure that all out and make it the best version of the game it can be. Yes. Okay, so I have placed an ore vein miner. So this is this large structure. And in here, there's actually a mining vehicle. It drives on rails. And here is the spot we're able to mine. So all that's left is we need power. So we actually need to put in some work here now because this thing does need high voltage power, so I will... Oh no, we're gonna go hook that up. Yeah, I'll have to, to place some power lines here through the caves. And from here, uh, connect it to the elevator. Mark, I'll, I'll leave you here for a second. I'll go no, up oh, no, 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 I get scared. Like, this is just like, it's just one, like, I don't know if you've played Deep Rock Galactic, but there's this moment where uh, the, you have to exfiltrate and leave the base. It's so freaking stressful. And you leaving me feels like that. I'm I'm sorry. I'll send the elevator right down as, as I'm exiting it on top. Um, okay. So the quickest way to do this is uh, by solar power uh, so I'll quickly place a bunch of solar panels here 
and it's also getting night this very moment but our debug tools are going to help us with that I love debugging is this just Minecraft in space, or do you have a pitch? No, Foundry is not Minecraft in space, but that's actually an awesome pitch. I would mean, totally play that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like the, uh, you know, it's it's the child of modded Minecraft and uh, Factorio. It's uh, infinite voxel planet. You can dig and build sort of the factory of your dreams. And the actual like story and narrative is something we've talked about too much. Uh, that, that people haven't seen really, uh, but you're you're going to be building these giant robot assembly lines and producing uh, just oodles of of uh, robots and, and shipping them off world. So there's some really exciting stuff coming in that, and uh, some some exciting uh, end game focused gameplay. But it you know a lot of people have said sort of like it's the, sort of the, the dream sandbox for for factory gameplay. Yeah, it's also or at least our our dream version of it. You know, everybody loves different factory games. It's fair enough. Yeah, it's also worth noting we do have uh, a lot of features that are not to be found in uh, similar games in that genre. Um, we're not really putting a focus, except on the underground and the voxel stuff uh, in in this stream. But if you want to take a look at our uh, death blog for example or just the steam page there, there it's linked we have plenty of stuff uh, for example would be assembly lines we visualize the production of robots we have huge modular buildings you're not placing by hand they're placed through what we call in, uh, construction industry like we have construction ships that build uh, construction sites for you there's there's a bunch of stuff in there so yeah i think uh, in the previous uh, dev stream we kind of went through a, a late game phase and uh, it's just insane how much uh, scale you get out of this game like the uh, you know the, the modular building are these, these mega structures that you build in an entirely different way just because of the scope of them and it's all about letting you scale up so you can build this giant mega factory. Do you like the way I'm laying this out, by the way, Patrick? This is I never have. totally fine. I wanted to contribute because I thought people were starting to think I didn't know how to, how to contribute. No, it's, it's very helpful. Thanks. Um, so, meanwhile, here I'm showing you the uh, active underground miner. Uh, you see the, the rails expanded and the rail miner is moving forward and he started drilling and as you see again this is actually removing real voxel blocks um, and it's going to dig into the large ore vein and eventually it'll hit the, the center the core um, so then it stops uh, so this is again so far at the start uh, and, and a finite source of ore although don't worry like when we say finite source of ore like they hold for like quite a while so it's not like you're constantly stressed about finding new ore like when you build this up there's enough for ore for like it, it depends a bit on your play speed you know for some player it might only be 10 hours for someone else it might be enough for 20 hours you know it depends on how build you, big you build your factory but yes and once this has hit the, the core and it stopped mining you can actually transform it into an inf infinite source of ore by building a fracking tower on top and, and that, uh, that building needs to be supplied with uh, fracking uh, liquid and as long as you're pumping that in at the top, you can convert those miners into endless sources of ore. So this is basically the, the middle ground. You can have endless ore, but you need to put in some effort. 
Are we uh, going to show Bracken Towers today? Like, I noticed our, our streams already hit the one hour mark, but uh, we'll you know, we'll see. Like let's let's continue with the the freight elevator first, and then yeah, we can okay. look at at the other stuff. So, uh, question was how many attachment? Are there more than one attachment point per ore vein? Yes, there, yes. there are a bunch. Yes. So you see all those things popping up. All of them are attachment points. Yeah, and those are randomized. So you could be lucky and uh, have one with more, and you can have one with with less. And if you're especially lucky, you will find one located in a mountain. And then those will have even more. So, yeah. So, to Did get your ore dirt rock the... as well, or yeah. only ore veins? Um, I think it only mines ore veins, right? We can't use it to clear out a tunnel like it used to. Yes, exactly. So, for some of you who have seen the older version of this machine, uh, we had in one of the alpha preview builds that was able to dig everywhere infinitely. Uh, this is currently not happening again in, in this build. Um, but we know you want some way to automatically excavate. So this is something we we're looking at to bring it back in in some in some way or, or shape. Yeah, it was it would call, would call bring back the boring machine. We did save all the codes. So we can bring it back as a feature. Uh, but I love the idea of just being able to build tunnels. <laughs> so I, I'm personally on team bring it back. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, it's just neat to, to be able to build this underground infrastructure and automate digging out holes and stuff. So does the miner siphon at one point or do we have to shift it to gather more? So eventually the miner hits the core and, and mines it out and it stops working but instead you can uh add a fracking tower on top in order to make it turn into basically an infinite orbit and so there, there's steps you have to do uh in order to make that work oh no let me out no no i'm sorry Patrick. <laughs> oh, the comp. i didn't want to interrupt you while talking so i no, it's figured okay, it's okay. you left me you left me in the in the uh in the tunnel has the game changed much, uh, you know, since Next Fest, or you know, I found it a little clunky. You know, uh, it, it has had some quality of life improvements. It's got a lot of polish on the on the on the opening hours of the game. It's it's going to be roughly though, you know, if you, if you didn't like the the grid building, it's probably not going to be for you. But um, you know, we're we're always looking at how to make it a little like snappier and and uh, and whatnot. So love love to hear some of your feedback and whatnot, because that's that's our goal is to make it satisfying to build no pun intended <laughs> so for people who have seen the the freight elevator in in the previous builds um one of the key improvements here is that it now automatically digs uh you need to place the the top part and the, the bottom part and then it automatically excavates the area in between so that was something that was hugely requested by the community so we brought you this for the launch version yeah so so we have a way to excavate vertically through these um and then then if we add back boring machines then we have have the horizontal excavation Thought one suggestion was adding uh, excavation drones and like where you can just sort of tell them where they, they should dig. I love that. Um, we, you know, we have lots of different ideas for excavation and I think it will come, uh, a bit of it will come more when we're trying to uh, find more uses for the biome materials, you know, the biome blocks. Uh, you know, for complexity reasons, we focus more on these, these not, you know, dense ore types but you know there would be there'd be a lot of fun if you can mine the uh the core voxels it's just we haven't found a great uh, great way to do that just yet that fits the game uh the game is made in unity c sharp uh but the simulation's done in c plus uh, plus so yeah mix of c plus plus and c sharp Most of the mods, I think all the mods so far are C-sharp based, right? 
Uh, yes. This yeah. makes sense. Bird and Patrick, are you making your? Yeah, I'm. I'm at the. Uh, below, I'm looking at the freight elevator, bringing up all those ore crates, so you can see how how this looks. Um, it's working now, and those large boxes transport the goods you are bringing in. For some reason, this texture is really blurry at the moment, so this <laughs> is something that goes on our bug list. It should not be as blurry as it is. It should more be like the, <laughs> the scaffolding right. here uh, in that sharpness. So something to, to look into right on. Hey, we got, we got, you said we have four, four weeks left, so we're set. We got this. We have four weeks it's, to figure know, out and, and the like, blurry texture. Yeah, we'll, we'll manage yeah, if that's that. Our, if that's our biggest problem, <laughs> there'll be a great launch. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> what's this game about? This is Foundry. Foundry coming out on May 2nd, uh, published by Paradox Interactive, made by Channel 3. It is a voxel factory building game inspired by Factorio and modded Minecraft. You build this endless voxel, procedural voxel world, the factory of your dreams. Through the line building, producing these giant assembly lines of robots that you're gonna ship off world for a yet to be announced reason. So it is, it is essentially what we are dream factory sandbox game. It's all about building the factory, not about uh, a bunch of external pressures or, or whatnot. So hope, hopefully that resonates with a large audience that, that actually loves the mechanics of these games. Okay. Did your, did, dot DJ Greg again, D, DJ, oh man, I'm so bad at singing. DJ R G E N. <laughs> they, they have they had had it on itch and they're super excited to play it on steam now uh yeah no we had a version on itch we've been improving it over and over over like just such a long period of time at this point where um we've been taking feedback from a community trying to get this game out um and so yeah their big itch audience helped us helped us get to where we are today and actually make the game polished and and uh <laughs> and uh, actually run. Are we humans? Uh, huh. You're a robot, but it, what is a robot? So, Patrick. well, gets <laughs> philosophical here, I guess. Uh, no, so yeah, the, the player character is, is a robot, but uh, there, there's a bit of a, of a background light narrative here we were not going to to reveal that at the moment on like why are you at this planet what what's going on is like there there is some uh narrative around that to not make it a just generic sandbox so there's there's a couple narrative elements around to to add to the game uh but yeah it's too early to to show that we we want we want it to be mostly a, a surprise. I'm actually not sure if we're going to, to fully reveal it till the launch. I'm not sure, Mark, if you had any plans around that, but yeah. And there's, you know, that's funny, because like um, we have some folks uh, play testing it right now in secret um, that have docs just now, and, and I love seeing the reaction <laughs> to those elements. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it just yet. <laughs> but there's some if you play foundry there's some really fun stuff coming up even early in the game that that uh hopefully hopefully surprises you mark i have you have seen you building up the um the uh the fracking tower well i would be but you know the reality is i don't think i have any uh construction industry available well, to us I'm quickly building this up here for you. This is actually not bad with, with debug spawn. Um, I'm not going to to explain here a lot here because we probably uh, do a separate stream about that. Uh, so enjoy the preview. Um, 
just trying to get that done yeah. as quickly as possible and oh it's okay we, we can come do it in the next stream too it looks like uh looks like it'll be a whole bunch of stuff well i think it's pretty much ready to go so we can show the, Actually, the fracking tower so this was one of the f things i was talking before we have those large modular buildings uh so this one is one of them, uh, the fracking tower. So this is not done. This is a construction Park. site. Um, yeah, we'll potentially work a bit on that. So currently those things already look partially built when you place it. This is just early access. Eventually the, the vision here is that you're not starting with half the building already. No, you'll actually get the real, what looks like a construction site, but that was out of scope for the release. You configure them through this planner and I'm seeing some missing textures, Mark. So here's maybe <laughs> some. I already, I already, I was like, is Patrick gonna click it? I hope he does it. <laughs> we're gonna fix that and then we're gonna go into it. No, no worries. We keep, opti we keep optimizing the game and we've optimized it too far. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's under construction and we have our construction industry placed here. It's not connected to power, so that's why it's not doing anything. So there you go, once you get it, there you go, we set. Yeah, I think I think the addition to all these like ships, so there's three types of ships in the game. There are transport long distance transport ships, construction ships, and then uh, what do we call these ones? Mine. Goodness, what are they yeah, we have uh, transport ships, construction ships, and the cargo ships. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit confusing. A uh, couple different eventually ships here. <laughs> eventually, as you get further in the game, all of a sudden your sky is just littered with these giant ships constructing mega structures around your world, and it, it's a. I don't know if you've ever played uh, Pharaoh before, but that, that was one of my favorite uh, building games. And uh, in Pharaoh, you, you have to build all these monuments. And I, I always think of our mega structures as something similar to, to the pyramids in Pharaoh. Well, that was quick. You nailed this. Well, yeah, again, uh, a debug tool to build them almost gotcha. instantly. Uh, otherwise, it takes way longer. And there's uh, animated yeah. drones coming down, working on, on the scaffold, yeah, we'll, so. Yeah, we'll show that in, in another stream. Yes. I mean, this is, the, this is the important part, which is as after you do this, now you have unlimited ore and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to worry about reconstructing your your uh, four lines and whatnot because you you started to frack. You're pumping in liquid and keeping that ore vein alive, and that's that's actually the um, uh, that, that's actually kind of the key here. Absolutely. Oh. Quickly supplying this with power because as soon as it has power, it automatically start constructing a scaffold because this is floating here maybe it's not going to start automatically and I, I need to think... press yeah oh, i need to start the building yeah so. okay good i was thought you were gonna say that uh i placed it wrong no no <laughs> it's totally fine that's all they put it down <laughs> so yeah as soon as you you started this this extends uh a scaffold uh, and struts into the ground because yeah. i just couldn't bear the idea of those massive things just being like held up by the drill itself that wouldn't make much sense would it so we we added this um they're not part of the base structure so that they're easier to place um those things also can be placed in uh in lakes or rivers when there's a ore vein at the bottom of the the lake um they look super cool in that place because they yeah. They look like a floating, like a oil, like an oil rig, basically. So, um, yeah, that's that's a feature we're really yeah. happy about. Yeah. So these you can only use these on uh, on ore veins. They're they're the only type of uh, of ore that can be fracked right now. That's correct, right? Yes. And so. Um, you know, this has been a wonderful stream because I, I think what what we learned here, 
So there's probably a lot of other stuff around mining we could have shown and gone into depth. We, we've recently put out a little video showing some of these features of Paradox and uh, kind of wanted to do a stream to deep dive, but we could we could talk about this stuff a lot longer. Uh, that That's for sure. There's just, there's just so much to mining in this game. There's so much still to come. So uh, I think I think we touched on all the really important bits here, which is nice. Like we, we talked about. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm littering the world with C4. Of Just, course, you know, of course you are. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure if you didn't realize I was stalling for time uh, as, I, as I threw C4 everywhere. I see what you're doing. I yeah. see, I, I don't see. think you can blow up mega structures with it, can you? No, you can't. So. I'm not even sure if you can blow up the construction ships. I, I actually, I'm pretty sure you can't. So this is going to be disappointing for you. So we, we have uh, you a couple know, buildings that are called, they have the blast resistant property. And yes, I'm just checking the, all those big things do have that. So you can blow up the smaller parts around it and see what, I what think remains. I'm going gonna, gonna to blow up the mountain probably is my, is my thinking right now. Uh, sure. We'll, we'll call it a, a day for the stream. <laughs> it's been really great. Like, I, you know, the one thing I love about these streams is just like chatting and, and seeing all the questions. Uh, because, you know, you work on, uh, I, in video game development, you work on games like quietly to yourself for so long. And then all of a sudden, one day, you get all these people that actually care about what you're doing. And it's, it's, a, it's a really fun, it's a really fun moment in game dev. Um, and I think. I think Foundry, we're just really excited to share with everybody and, and get their feedback and improve it. So, uh, okay, well, I think I think the base is done. Mm -hmm. We'll see. <laughs> that's it. That's all I blew up. I threw so many. We're gonna have to make level tier two explosives. That's for sure. Yeah, we need to make make bigger ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Ones that, that go through the blast uh, resistant uh, property. That's what we need. <laughs> of course, of course, that's what you need. Yeah. What's after C four? C five? Is that how it works? <laughs> I don't think that's accurate, but I'm not an expert I, on I, the subject. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. But you know, I, it's um, we're gonna be doing this every week. We're gonna do like a similar one hour ish stream talking about. A different feature and uh, we'd love to chat with you guys if you want to pop in again think about any questions you might have uh, i'm hearing thermal detonators uh blast resistant does not equal nuke resistant <laughs> i agree with that the so mini nukes are coming if we do a nuclear update <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> we have a we have a peggy three rating and now we are talking about mini nukes so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to think on on uh, on that rating a little bit here Certainly. <laughs> well, it's been wonderful, everybody. And uh, again, I'm, I'm Mark. I'm part of the dev team on, on Foundry, and this is... I'm Patrick, game director. Yeah. yeah Thanks for uh, tuning in. Yeah, uh, please join us again next week at the same time, and we'll, uh, we'll do some more Foundry, and uh, we'll, we'll show another feature off. Same time, different day, though. This, this time it's on uh, next Wednesday, same time. That's great. Right. And uh, if you haven't yet and you, you like what you're seeing here, you're interested, go wishlist it on Steam. It means a lot. It helps us out a ton. Tells Steam people care about this game. So uh, please, if you're if you're interested at all, give it a wishlist. And it comes out on May 2nd into early access. Yeah. Thanks for right. tuning in. See you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye-bye.